Thank you, Brian, for that uh, great um, introduction to uh, the message, Eugene Peterson. I've always been very much appreciative, which is why I chose all those readings specifically from the message. And uh, um, I'm sure that we don't relate at all to that church in Ephesus. Um, so uh, this morning, the idea of the minister of music speaking about music and worship seems very obvious, I guess, maybe a little cliche even. Uh, but music is a subject that is quite dear to my heart, obviously, and uh, as is the subject of worship. So I'm talking about both of them. The first question I pose is this. Why do we bother with music at church? Why don't we just gather TED Talk style? You know, you have the speaker, the PowerPoint, go for coffee after. Uh, nice and clean, much cheaper. You don't have to pay for me or the musicians or the singers. I shouldn't put ideas in your head maybe, but... Um, <laughs> so why do we spend all this money and time and energy on music in the church? What is the point of all this singing? And moreover, singing about God and to God, singing about Jesus, the Spirit, what's the point in all that? Well, it's a good question. And uh, I've been pondering this question all my teenage and adult life. I've studied music and theology at Bible College at a Christian university. Uh, I spent many years as a music pastor, that's what they call them in the evangelical world, at four different churches, uh, during which my theology continued to evolve and unravel and get put back together again differently, this metamorphosis of deconstruction and reconstruction. And now here we are. I'm gonna share with you a brief, hopefully brief snippet of my current thinking on the matter. So first, I would like to talk about music and then worship and how they interplay. So drilling down a bit into the category of music, I wanna speak specifically about singing and singing together, which is what we do when we come together. So there are many scientific studies that have shown that group singing actually changes our brain. Singing in a group has been scientifically proven to lower stress, relieve anxiety, and elevate endorphins. So I'd like to share a tiny little bit of the science with you. So now we're going to talk about pot. <laughs> you all know about pot, of course, some of you more than others. <laughs> Cannabis is the most popular source of the canna cannabinoids. Everybody say cannabinoids. Good. It's a good thing to say in church, cannabinoids. A cannabinoid is an active chemical compound that connects to receptors in our body, producing a variety of mood-altering or calming effects depending on the specific cannabinoid. cannabinoid. Uh, first of all, THC is the most popular cannabinoid. Uh, you can see its characteristics listed there, um, particularly the strongly psychoactive bit. Uh, and then there's also CBD, which has become very popular. It's also uh, is popular for a variety of reasons. I take it, Emma takes it, um, for our own different, well, actually very similar reasons. Uh, <laughs> cannabis is an external source of cannabinoids, um, but the human body has its own system of producing cannabinoids called the endocannabinoid system. Everybody say, the endocannabinoid system is a network of receptors spread throughout our entire body that control some of our most vital functions, including our immune system, our appetite, our mood, memory, and neuroprotection. Uh, so endocannabinoids, or ECBs, are the body's own version of cannabis. Uh, they are molecules produced by the body. Elevated mood and emotions come from an increase of CBDs, ECBs, rather. And uh, this discovery began in the 80s and then continued into the 90s. So it's relatively recent. Um, and so it's a wonderful insight uh, into how, this, how our body works. Uh, so I encourage you to research it. I'm not going to give you all the details that I learned. Uh, you'll be glad to know. Um, but you've heard of the runner's high. Some of you have experienced this. Uh, this high is due in part to the ECBs that are released and circulating in our system. Okay, so what does this have to do with music? There was an interesting study, I thought, interesting, done in the UK in 2018. Nine healthy postmenopausal female volunteers were recruited from a local choir as people who enjoyed singing as well as exercise. So it's kind of a level playing field as far as uh, what they enjoyed naturally. 
uh, circulating ECBs and mood and hunger ratings were measured before and immediately after 30 minutes of reading, dancing, cycling, and singing in a fasted state. So, and all activities were done as a group. So, survey says, reading increased OEA levels by 28%, that's one of the cannabinoids, um, and I'm not gonna bother naming them, OEA is good enough, uh, and increased the desire to eat. So just so you know, watch out for reading. Uh, dancing did not affect ECB levels or hunger ratings, but decreased negative mood and emotions. Uh, I know, that's, I was surprised by that too. Maybe they weren't really dancers, so it, it could have been a thing. Uh, cycling, um, and can testify to this, increased OEA levels by 26% and tended to decrease how hungry volunteers felt without affecting mood. So if you're feeling hangry, go for a bike ride. Uh, now singing, check this out, increase anandamide, that's a very important one uh, because it it's probably affects, it's one of the cannabinoids that affects mood the most. So that was increased by 42% and PEA by 53% and that another one by 34%. So it improved mood and emotions without affecting hunger scores. Uh, so the result of this survey, the study, was only group singing was found to significantly improve positive mood and emotions and also tended to decrease negative mood and emotions. So let's hear it for singing, yay. Now obviously the real point of me sharing this is to plug the very real health benefits of choir. Um, <laughs> see, look at all these released ECBs up there on the screen. But really, I love when science confirms stuff that we all intrinsically know already. What we believe naturally, because uh, we've experienced it, and what science tells us is that singing together is very powerful. The sense of community gained when a group sings together is profound and healthy. So we'll keep doing that. Um, okay, good, so I've justified part of the reasons why I exist here in this place. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit more about uh, worship. And um, this, I'm gonna, there's a lot of God talk that's gonna happen. And so uh, if there are any of my atheist friends here, just hang in there. Um, you can think of God as a force of love and that works because this is key. We don't think that anybody's excluded from the love of God by what they believe. I believe that God's love pulsates in and through you even if you don't acknowledge that that's what's happening. So we're all in this together anyway. Um, so what does singing do for us here? I know everybody's experience is different. You might not consider yourself a singer. Uh, you might be thinking, I don't really care for singing. I just endure it until we get to the, uh, the rest of the service or the coffee time or I just like the community, whatever. But now you know that like eating your vegetables or going to the gym, group singing is good for you. So you're welcome. Now you know that. But for most everyone, I think, we know that it opens our hearts. Singing helps us internalize what we believe. For instance, when we sing something that is true for us, it resonates deeply. Um, like, I am brave, I am strong, I am whom I'm meant to be, this is me. It's different when I sing it than when I say it. Or, there are no strangers, there are no outcasts, there are no orphans, of God. I can feel the ECBs releasing. For me, anyway, so if I'm the only one that gets something out of this talk, well, at least somebody did. And my soul cries out, join me with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great, etc. So let's talk about worship now. What is worship by definition? Worship is both a noun and a verb. We refer to worship as the church service. We'll say, we're going to worship. Um, when does worship happen? Uh, we refer to activities during the service as acts of worship, the singing, the sermon, the offering. Don't forget the offering is an important act of worship. <laughs> I usually think of worship as a verb, an action. Worship is what we do regardless of where we are. For instance, we might be in creation, in nature, and there's an element of reverence and awe at the beauty of our earth 
or in a baby's face or in a loving relationship. Um, caring for the earth is an act of worship. So here's a working definition for us. Worship is ascribing worth to something or someone through our words and actions. To worship is to regard with great or extravagant respect, honor, or devotion. So as Christians, we believe that God is love, so when we worship God, we are worshiping love itself. Who else or what else is worthy of such praise? Now, does God need this? Is God some cosmic narcissist, eternally insecure about God's omnipotence and perfection? Nothing could be less true about God as revealed in Christ, who humbled himself to the point of death, even death on a cross, for the sake of love. In 1 Corinthians 13, you've heard it many times, the love chapter, you know, love is patient, love is kind, etc. Uh, what I would like to do is just, we'll look at that, and um, I've changed all the time it says God to the word love, because I believe those words are interchangeable. So we're going to look at it so we can just hear it a little differently. God is patient, God is kind. God is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. God does not insist on God's own way. God is not irritable or resentful. God does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. God bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. So this God of ours is the very essence of love and, and is a sentient being, the creation and manifestation of love itself. So I suggest that we worship God because it makes us aware of who we are in relationship to God and one another. We get recalibrated, you might say. And we are reminded that we are not the center of our universe. Love is, or God is. When we worship, we humble ourselves through expressions of gratitude and awe. We open ourselves to the divine. When we sing together in worship, we stand in defiance of the idea that we are each capable on our own as little isolated islands. When we sing together in worship, it helps us move from a group of individuals into a community. When we sing together in worship, we stand in defiance, we stand in defiance of the idea that our opinions that we hold and our view of ourselves matters more than anyone else. We're saying that's not true. When we sing together in worship, we are celebrating our unity in Christ while celebrating the diversity of human, uh, human diversity and inclusion. When we sing together in worship, we are saying that multiple generations can come together and each one belong and matter. When we sing together in worship, we are saying that we are in this together. When we sing our truths about love conquering all, we begin to believe it. It gets in us when we sing those things. So no wonder the Bible is full of exhortations to sing and play instruments, and play them loudly, I might add. It's biblical, you know, it gets a little loud in here. Um, very similar to what Thomas Ord preached two weeks ago, and I really recommend you take a look at that. Um, I think it was two weeks ago. Uh, my belief is that God pulsates and radiates love into every crack in the universe that will let God in. Because of our free will, a heart can remain resistant. But if a heart lets love in, real love, the heart is letting God in. So the reason we exist as a church community, in my opinion, our raison d'etre, is that love, is God's love can be made known to ourselves, one another, and the world around us. So I imagine isolated people or addicted people um, or simply regular people who are surviving. They've shut down parts of their hearts to go on. They cope. They manage. And I could speak first person because we all experience it at times. We cope. We manage. But do we thrive? And I'm not saying that church is the answer. I'm not saying that coming together and singing together, that poof, all good. What I am saying, though, is that love is the answer. And how does love get in? And, of course, there are many ways that love gets in through relationship, through connection um, with creation. But what I'm focusing on is the notion that music and worship is one way for love to get in. And I believe this happens here all the time. When we sing about the God who is love, our hearts and minds are opened and love seeps in. People talk about crying and not knowing why. 
I see that as cracks into the areas we didn't, need, we didn't know that we needed love to seep into. The addicts and the sellers of our hearts that need a good cleansing and healing. So this love getting into us is an excellent reason to worship. Another aspect, and I shall speak for myself, I find worship helps me to get my heart and mind aligned to what God's love wants for me, for you, for our earth, for our city, for our world. So really, worshiping together, singing together with you all is the very best thing I can do for myself. It might not feel as good as buying stuff on Amazon. I mean, free shipping. That's, that's a bit of a rush. Or chips. Um, or any number of little addictions we might have. Speaking for myself, of course. But worshiping together does feel good. It does release those ECBs, and it is valuable. It is good for us psychologically. So in summary, my final thought for the day is that singing together in worship helps us to get out of our protective shells into community. It helps to get the message of God's intentional living into our hearts, and it helps to empower us to live and love the way Jesus lived and loved. May this be so. Amen. Oh. Thank you for that affirmation. That does feel good. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> what I'd like us to do now is we will sing um, the song that we began a minute ago, My Heart Cries Out. I'm really glad that didn't take as long as I thought it might. <laughs> For your sake. Please let's stand as we're able. My soul cries out with a joyful shout.
generations rage from age to age. We remember who holds us fast. God's mercy must deliver us from the conqueror's crushing grasp. This